بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان دس پارٹ بی آف دا سیکنڈ تھرڈ لیکچر آن ڈسکرپٹو اسٹیٹسٹکس اینڈ اسلامک اپروچ وی ول ایکسپلین ان ڈیٹیل ہاؤ لائف ایکسپیکٹنسیز آر کمپیوٹیڈ یوزنگ اے ہائپوتھیٹیکل ایگزامپل سو دا فرسٹ اسٹیپ ٹو کمپیوٹ لائف ایکسپیکٹنسی وی نیڈ اے مورٹیلٹی ٹیبل واٹ از اے مورٹیلٹی ٹیبل اٹ از کلاسیفیکیشن آف دا نمبر آف ڈیتھس اکارڈنگ ٹو دیئر ایج کیٹیگری So now I'm just going to make up some numbers to show how it works. So um, suppose that in the age category of 0 to 10, there are 30 million people in the population. In the 10 to 20 category, there are 40 million. In um, 20 to 30, there are 25 million, 15 million, and 5 million. So this is a population. We are going to assume that everybody dies at beyond 50, just to simplify life so there are five age categories 0 to 10 10 to 20 20 to 30 30 to 40 and 40 to 50 and the populations inside each of these categories alive in the year 2017 at the start of 2017 are these numbers 30 million 40 million 25 million 15 million and 5 million now we will make up some mortality numbers to go with that So in the first group of um, 0 to 10 years old there were 6 million deaths in 2017 you look at all the deaths and you look at the number of deaths which took place in this age category and you tabulate that there were 10 million deaths in uh, 10 to 20 age category there were 15 million deaths in 20 to 30 category uh, there were um, 10 million 30 to 40 and all 5 million of the 40 to 50 years old died so there was a 100% mortality so these are the numbers now from these numbers we get the rates the percentages so 20% mortality in the first age category uh, 10 deaths out of 40 million 10 million out of 40 is 25% mortality 15 million out of 25 is 60% mortality mortality um 10 million deaths out of 15 million population is a 66 or two thirds mortality and finally in the last age group we have 100% mortality so these this is a mortality table it tells you the rates of death in each age group we use this information to calculate life expectancies as we will show in the next table for the life expectancy calculation we assume that there are 1000 people who were just born today at the start of the year 2017 the the year for which we have a data table for for for, for which we have mortality table so then we do calculation in step by step so live at the beginning of this year we had 1000 newborns and we know that the mortality rate in this group is 20% from the mortality table so that means that uh, 20% of them will die during this period um, so that's uh, 200 people who will die uh, now what we do that is the key to the life expectancy calculation we find out what was the total life span of all of these 200 people who died so we don't know when they died in this group in this age category 0 to 10 so we just assume that the average age of all of these 200 was the midpoint of this category which is 5 <clears throat> so we assume that all 200 of them lived for an average of 5 years because they lived between 0 and 10 if the deaths are equally distributed over the whole period then the average will come out to be 5 so if they all lived for 5 years and there are 200 people then there's a total of a thousand um thousand years that they lived between themselves 5 years times 2000 people is 1000 person years <clears throat> so that's very important number for the life expectancy we go on from this now <clears throat> because 200 people died in the 0 to 10 category so in the 10 to 20 category there are only 800 people that entered to this at the start of this <clears throat> age group 
Now note that this this will be happening 10 years from 2000. So this we are now talking about what will happen in 2027. And even the first 20%, this is talking about uh, what will happen between 2017 and 2000 and sorry, 2017 and 2027. So the 20% mortality rate, which we applied from the mortality table, doesn't really apply because we don't know what will happen in the future. It's just a guess. We are using uh, this year's rate and extrapolating it and assuming that it will remain the same but it might not. So there is some doubt about this. But anyway, we make this assumption that the rate that was valid in 2017 will continue to be valid for this age group. So now we have 800 people who are alive at, in 2027 and they, are, they have ages between um, uh, 10 um, to 20. Uh, sorry, that's not how it works. Um, there are 800 newborns and they are all age exactly 10 at the beginning of the age uh, 2027 because they were all born exactly at the beginning of uh, 2017. So now they are all age 10. There are 800 people, 200 died along the way. And we know the mortality rate is 25% from the mortality table. So that means that one fourth of these people will die in this age bracket. So 200 people died in this age bracket. And now we ask how much, how long did they live? So again, using the midpoint, on the average, each of these 200 people lived for 15 years. Uh, 15 is the midpoint between 10 and 20. So if each of them lived for 15 years, then the total life they lived uh, was 3,015 times 200 person years. And the, that gives you 3,000 lifespan for these 200 people who died in this age category. So we continue with this process and we come to the 20 to 30 age category. Now we're talking about 2037. In that year, the newborns at, uh, are now exactly um, 20 years old and um, 400 of them have died along the way, but 600 of them have survived. So at the beginning of uh, 2037, 600 people are alive. Now we apply the mortality rate of 60% from our mortality table, which is the rate of death of this age category in 2017. Will it still apply in 2037? We don't know, but we don't have any better guess. So we just use this number. So 60% mortality rate gives us 360 deaths. Now of these people who died, how long did they live, these 360? Well, using the midpoint 25, we multiply 360 by 25, we get 9,000 years that these people lived. So now we go on to the next group. Now 360 people died out of the 600. So our original batch uh, is now reduced to 240 people. Uh, these are all people who were newborns in 2017 beginning. On January 1, 2017, these were all, these thousand people were all born in the same day. And now they are all 30 years old in 2047. And um, 240 of them are alive. And now we apply the two thirds mortality rate for this group that we observed in this year and apply it to 2047, uh, which is, of course, uh, not. Um, valid assumption, but there is nothing better we can do. That gives us two thirds of 240 people die. So 160 people die. And if we calculate what was the average amount of life that they lived, uh, each of these 160 people lived for 35 years on the average. So we multiply 35 by 16, 160 and we get 5,600 years. And finally, we can come to the last group. And now only 80 people are left of this batch of 1,000. There's a 100% mortality. All 80 of them die in this age category. And we assume that uh, the average age is 45. That gives us the total lifespan of 2,000. Uh, that gives us total of lifespan of 45 times 80, which is 3,600. Now we add up all of the 
um, lifespans of all of the people in this 1000 uh, group of newborns and that adds up to 18,600. Now what is the average lifespan? Well we divide 18,600 by 1000 and we get 18.6. So this is the life expectancy 18.6 years. So the newborns in this um, 2000 and uh, so th this is called life expectancy at birth. If the people were, uh, if people are born in January 1, 2017, then uh, if a thousand people are born in January 1, 2017, then the average lifespan will be 18.6 years. Instead of the average lifespan, we can also use the median lifespan. This is not so common, but this is also sometimes called half-life in other contexts. Uh, this is easy to compute. We look at the same uh, table that we did in the last uh, slide and we do go through the same cal calculations. We have 1000 people who were live at the beginning uh, in January 1, 2017 and we trace through them. Now the goal is to find out when 500 people die. The date on which 500 people die and so 500 remain is the half-life. And so we see that in the 10 to 20 category, we have 400 deaths. And in the next category, we have 360 deaths. So that means that the 500th person will die sometime in this period between 20 to 29. And so uh, we need 100 deaths to get to reach 500. So we want to look at when the 500th person dies and that is going to be 100 out of 360. So when will the first 100 people out of this group of 360 die? Well, we know that these 360 people are going to die between 20 and 30 years and they are going to die roughly at a uniform rate. So the first 100 will, so 360 deaths will take place in 10 years the first 100 will take place in the proportion 100 divided by 360 and that is about uh, a little less than a third. Uh, so we multiply that by 10 to get 2.777 years. That is the, uh, at 2.77 years, the 100th person will die. Now uh, there's 20 years already that has gone on. So if we add that 20, we get the median age to be 22.78 years. Note that this is substantially higher than the 18.6 life expectancy that we saw uh, for the average. So the average and the median are somewhat different. We have seen that there is a assumption that we are making that current mortality is equal to future mortality. That's uh, and, and there are some things we can do to try to improve that. Uh, but that's not, uh, because future is basically inherently uncertain, there is not much we can do about, about uh, making accurate forecasts for uh, the future. Uh, there are many refinements that you can make to these calculations, which are rough, basic, crude, and simple, and easy to understand. But one of the important ones that matters sometimes is that what we are assuming in these calculations that at the, the, the all deaths which are in a given period take place uh, are equally distributed throughout the ages. So to give an example, we assume that there was a 20% mortality in the category 0 to 10. So the uh, assumption on which our calculations are based are these 200 deaths which take place are uh, equally spread. In the age 0 to 1, you have 20 deaths. Age 1 to 2, you have 20 and so on. Now, this assumption may not be justified. And in some cases, you have um, more deaths in the 0 to 1 period and then very few deaths after you survive for one year. And this can cause some bias. And the best solution for that is to get the age-specific death rates for each year. And this is available, this data is available in many situations. I just want to show something very simple in this slide. And basically, if we assume 20 deaths in every year, uh, then we note that the rate of uh, uh, deaths 
keeps going up because we have 20 deaths in 0 to 1. So only 980 survivors in the age 1 to 2. Now 20 deaths is now a larger proportion. So it goes 2.04%. And each uh, period, if the deaths are constant, then the probability of death keeps going up. So you might want to do it the other way. That is keep the rate the same and allow the number of deaths to decline as you go up. Uh, it's not clear which is more plausible. The correct thing to do is to look at the actual rate uh, using the data. But if we keep the, uh, the rate constant at 2%, then the deaths keep going down because the survivors keep reducing. And so actually you get only 182 deaths. So you have to increase the rate and you can show that if you, if you are at 2.21%, then you get approximately a total of 200 deaths where the rest starts out by being slightly above 20 and then eventually decrease to below 20. So these are some complications, but these don't really matter very much because uh, all we can do is make a rough estimate of the life expectancy. We cannot get the exact value because it, uh, it depends on what was going to happen in the future, which nobody knows.